For those of you who missed class today, uh, yesterday or two days ago, you made a force versus stretch graph with a uh, spring compressed on a track. Um, and from that force stretch information, you found the stiffness of the spring, the spring constant, and we found the area under the graph to find the amount of elastic energy stored in the spring at one, two, three, and four centimeters. We had previously discussed the fact that all of the energy that was originally stored in the compression of the spring, the elastic energy, would be stored as kinetic energy once the spring, or the cart left the spring. In doing so, we could say that the elastic energy at position B is equal to the kinetic energy at C. Yesterday, when kids are in class, they uh, compress the cart into the spring storing elastic energy and from that oops and from that measuring the speed of the car as it left and as time as the as the energy got bigger the speed increased um, as well and we had this top open curve we've had top open curves before like our position versus time graph from our wheel and axle lab so like that uh, we ended up squaring the thing on the x axis which would have been the speed um, and so students yesterday during class or last night for homework made an elastic energy versus speed squared graph. We noted that uh, in order to square the speed, we had to do speed times speed. So that's speed squared and meters per second times meters per second would be meters squared per second squared. At that point, we were supposed to make a mathematical analysis for this linearized graph last night. So we, if we take a look up here, we've got uh, for that energy versus speed squared graph. We have y equals mx plus b, the y-axis we have energy, the x-axis we have speed squared. So we said that uh, energy is equal to some constant k times the speed squared. Uh, and because we have a y-intercept that is zero and a positive constant slope, we can now say that that energy and speed squared is directly proportional. Next up, how would you calculate that constant K? Well, we do the rise over run or change in energy divided by a change in speed squared. I had a sample version that had a slope of 1.20 joules per meter squared per second squared. Double check the units on that to make sure that those are correct for you. And now we've got the energy is equal to the slope, that constant slope of 0.12 uh, joules per meter squared per second squared times the speed squared. Well, then we had to try to figure out uh, what the slope of that graph represented. And I've realized I've erased this since I did this earlier today. We had units of joules per meter squared per second squared. And from that, we did some unit analysis. Last week, we found out joule is a measurement of energy and that it can be rewritten as a Newton times a meter. And we have meters squared per second squared. A bunch of kids wrote meters per second squared yesterday by accident, but if we pulled just one meter off over here, we could say that a meter squared per second squared is a meter times a meter per second squared. And then kids noticed that we could reduce, that those meters would reduce to one. So now we have newtons on the top and meters per, sec meters per second squared on the bottom. And we discussed that a newton is the amount of net force required to get a kilogram of mass to change its acceleration by one meter per second squared. And with meters per second squared on the bottom, the meters per second squared reduce to one, and that leaves us with units of kilograms, which guided us to the idea of what did we hold constant in the experiment? What do we hold constant in the experiment that was measured in mass? Uh, kids all called out that it might be the mass of the cart, but when we took a look at people's data, uh, the mass of their carts were around 230 grams or 0 0.230 kilograms, but people's slopes were about 0 0.121411, which the kids figured out that that was about half of the total mass. So we figured out that the slope represents half the mass of the system. So now we have a new equation. Energy is equal to one half the mass times the speed squared. And remembering that the elastic energy that we started with was the kinetic energy at the end, we can now adjust this. So this is the kinetic energy is equal to one half the mass times the speed squared. Um, I would normally throw in some calculations in here, put some values in for mass, and then a value for speed squared. Um, do the calculation, then find out how, how does the energy change if we double the mass, or how would the energy change if we doubled the speed. We also did a uh, percent error on this, 
You'll need to know the slope of your graph. You'll need to know the mass of your system and half the mass of your system because that's the scientifically expected value for the slope. We used our formula for percent error because the scientifically expected value is half the mass of the system. That's what you put in there minus your slope um, divided by the scientifically expected value that one half the mass of the system times 100. Remember that's absolute value of those. So we filled in the half the mass of their system minus our slope divided by the half the mass of the system, the absolute value of the top, did some calculations, and this one came out to be 4.3%. You should, of course, do this for your own. Um, but ultimately, we found out uh, a new way to calculate energy, and more specifically, kinetic energy using one half the mass times the speed squared. Along with what we've learned last week about uh, elastic energy, we can use this to solve problems. Uh, there will be homework posted to Google Classroom.